by engineer Felix Omokaro, who is a senior energy engineer at Interaccess Energies, and he will be talking about ways to uh, improve in Nigeria's economy through sustainable energy sufficiency. You're very much welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Well, firstly, um, let's talk about energy as a whole. You know, when, when people hear energy, it's a very, very broad spectrum. Are we talking about oil and gas? Are we talking about electricity? It's, it's quite broad. And Nigerians, in particular, have different means of energy generation that they rely on, homes rely on, businesses rely on, and, you know, the economy in itself thrives on energy. But firstly, let's uh, take a broader look at what energy means to you as an engineer. Thank you very much um, for having me here. Um, so essentially, energy is um, from the very basic knowledge. Energy is just the ability to do work. Uh, so energy is a source and it's also a product. So if you're coming from the background of oil and gas, you have crude oil, uh, which is refined to give you petroleum products. You have petrol, you have diesel, you have um, bitumen, um, quota, which you use to tie your roads. So yes. that is essentially it. And electricity is also a product. So electricity can be um, generated from gas, from oil, your petrol generators, diesel generators, your solar sustainable energy solutions, hydro, um, as well as geothermal. So yes. these are essentially um, sources and products for you to generate, which Nigeria and Africa in general has sufficient energy sources, but we do not have the products to drive our economy. Going back to the topic, you just... Well, you, you highlighted that we have energy sources, but we don't have the products. And these products are, all these are byproducts of refinement in some cases and uh, processing in other cases. Let's talk about crude oil, for example. Nigeria is blessed with crude since uh, crude was it was discovered in the country. It's it's been it's been an upward trend for the nation, but somehow, many many decades down the line. We seem to have refineries that are not working yet. And government after government keep promising on these refineries would work. They keep giving deadlines until they leave the, the corridors of power. Another government comes in. However, a private sector investor came into the system, came into the field, and did the magic that successive governments have not been able to do in decades. And somehow, that particular investor is being frustrated by powers that be. So firstly, I want to ask, is crude in itself a blessing or a cost to Nigeria as it stands? Well, it depends. Um, if you look at it from our history, it seems more of a curse. Um, although we've had some revenue streams of billions and trillions of dollars in revenue streams to the co country, which by the way it's not being well managed it's obvious in public domain yeah. um but it's more of a curse than a blessing but it should be a blessing when it's um well or better managed yeah. so um and looking at it from the dangote aspect it's a good one if you have private sector individuals coming into that sector to play in and um, being able to provide um crude oil and, and petroleum sources for us diesel um, and petrol and I, I mean if you go around abuja around nigeria you can see the long queues that in we've filling been stations we've been experiencing yeah. and um, people have to queue um, overnight stay for long hours and you have to waste productive um, hours on queues so essentially we hope that even more players can come in but it's not been looking good especially with the challenges dangote has had yeah well with with the rising cost of petroleum products talk, talking about pms talking about diesel in most feeling in most parts of the country i mean in abuja in lagos it's been quite peculiar for most motorists to access petrol in its sense to even not to talk of purchasing it because because right now it's too expensive the landing cost is becoming way too expensive for even marketers to buy and you know distribute 
it's becoming a huge problem. However, the debacle, the fight between or amongst NMDPRA, NMPCL, and the Dangote refinery has been lingering for quite a while. And this has also created a ripple effect that has affected most businesses in the country. People who rely on, you know, diesel or uh, PMS for running their businesses. Since obviously it's Nigeria, there is very little to no electricity in most parts of the country. So people use generators to power their businesses. My question now is, how can we close up this energy gap? Are there other energy sources that can be maybe explored to better enhance productivity uh, in, in our economy? And if you look at it, um, most Nigerians have diversified from the traditional energy sources. Um, usually in the past, you have petrol generators, diesel generators, although most people still buy it, but most are transitioned towards sustainable energy solutions, which yes. is um, um, solar. Hydro is sustainable, but it's usually for big... Um, big or um, energy generation um, generation or you also have small um, um, hydro power stations but it cannot be for individual usage or small businesses or homes so most people are switched to solar which is um, reliable um, small shops even big businesses if you go to Edu, you would see coca-cola um, bottling um, plants the company is completely um, off the grid it's oh. being powered by solar. Um, if you see um, Base University as well, um, has a very huge um, solar power farm there as well. So diversifying the energy sources would be the best option for us. And if you look at it, sustainable energy solutions, especially solar, you don't require any source of energy that you need to go to the markets or to the filling station to get. It's essentially the sun. You essentially buy the conversion kit, which I call it your solar panels, yes. your inverters and batteries, and you can live um, your life comfortably, just like you have um, 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 energy availability in the West. So this is just the case. Diversifying the energy sources will be the best. Well, conversion kits for solar, solar energy generation, uh, some of these parts you mentioned are imported and assembled here in Nigeria and which I you would agree with me that is not quite sustainable and it doesn't come cheap as well that is why most homes now cannot afford solar panels or inverter batteries that work with solar panels to be able to you know generate other sources of energy in their homes as opposed to what is obtainable uh, from the discos and all of that. How can we start? Is there a possibility, do you see in the nearest future or maybe in the long term, a possibility of Nigeria producing its own solar panels and not just importing parts and assembling it here as a form of um, energy generation? Yes. I, mean, I mean, I know they are, they, are, they are solar farms and all that, but still, can we start producing? It's not rocket science to do these things. Um, there are already initiatives that are being tailored um, towards producing um, these parts or components. Um, but we know it takes just more than um, policies to do that. You need the technological know-how. Uh, yes. Because even in the West, the solar panels you see, um, the Westerners are also still trying to improve on these systems. Um, um, better technology being involved, use of AI, use of better parts. For example, if you look at solar panels, there are thin lines that connect the cells. That's yes. made of silver. Yes. But um, in Australia, um, a scientist found a way to connect it with copper. Which, which is cheaper. Are, yes, which is cheaper and has dropped, steadily will drop the price. If you look at the global price of um, solar panels, the prices steadily are dropping. Are dropping. Yeah. So it's not something that should be rocket science to us in this country. But um, you know the way things are done in, in Nigeria. So essentially, for it to be cheaper, for it to be affordable, it has to be produced in Nigeria. For example, lithium batteries. 
I produce with lithium essentially. We have it abundantly in Nigeria, in Nasara State, just close by here. In Nasarawa, in Taraba, in, in, in many parts of, so, of, of northern mean, Nigeria. We essentially are behaving like um, um, the, um, we export the raw materials and we bring it back into the country. Just the way we do with crude. Exactly. So it's like it's the same story for every sector. Um, so this has to change. We need to essentially um, ensure that whatever we have, we can convert it to the finished product. And why not sell the finished product? I think um, um, just like Dangote is trying to do, this can also be done in the sustainable energy sector. Um, for hydro, it's essentially water, so you just need to build the dams. Uh, but for um, solar, um, we're still importing the technology, but it shouldn't take us um, too long or too difficult. We essentially need to just copy, because what do you need to do? It's being done. I mean, I mean it's like, like you said, it's not rocket science, it's just solar science. <laughs> you just take it <laughs> and you bring it and you duplicate. Um, instead of using the word copy, duplicate the system. Yes. And the same factory maybe that works in China should work here. I mean, so you don't, you don't, ne we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel at all. We are just copying the model or duplicating the model and making it available to the general public. Exactly. Well, well, engineer, another form of energy that um, most Western countries have employed, which is working fantastically well for them, is wind energy. So, uh, wind turbines. And uh, it's something that I've never seen in Nigeria, the sheer size of it, the large ones, that you could see a wind turbine farm spread across acres of land. Why aren't we exploring that in Nigeria? I mean, we have wind here, don't we? It's an element that is important here as well. The challenge with wind is you need it to be constant year-round. Um, so if you look at most of the in the low regions like Holland, Belgium, yes. you see a lot of wind turbines. Wind turbines, yes. The wind is constant there. Yes. Okay, so um, for wind, you need about um, 10 meter per second square constantly. So it's not like um, sometimes it doesn't, there's no wind, the turbine is wasting. And you know, it's not just about engineering, it goes into the financials as well. Yes. So if you're not generating, essentially... Um, not producing anything, there's no payback. So you need constant part wind generation, um, constant wind, I'll call it supply because the wind needs to blow constantly, constantly. year in, year round. But we have, um, we've had a wind turn, but I think it's, um, it wasn't really successful in Katsina. There was a 10 megawatt wind farm. Okay. Um, you, um, yes, in Katsina. Um, but that's been, many people have asked this question, but it needs to be constant. Not just you have it uh, maybe two months or three months. So constantly, wind is, that's the challenge. So, so, so you, you think that is the major challenge that is restricting or stopping Nigeria from exploring that form of energy generation? Uh, no, not, not really. Uh, mostly... I think Nigerians sometimes we look at the low hanging fruit. So most people just look, oh, you put your solar panels, you have abundant sunlight, except during rainy season, and you just harvest. Why thinking about carrying a very high tower? Uh, well, well, these, these, the issue of solar panels and all of that, these are things that individuals can actually do for themselves, disconnect themselves from the discos, disconnect themselves from paying any form of tariff to the federal government or whoever it is. However, let's also knock the government on the head. Let's knock the government. They are saddled with the responsibility of exploring some of these energy options, providing it in mass to the general public. I mean, people are not going to get it for free. Certainly, they are going to purchase it. So why aren't we diversifying? Why have we been hinged on crude? And why have we been hinged on just, um, what is it called? The regular dams that we use for power generation and all of that. Why are we just focused on those things and not open-minded in terms of uh, creativity in other sectors, in other uh, ways of energy generation? Well, we're already moving in that direction. Um, one of the northeast states is... Um 
moving towards um, um, a large solar farm. Um, so it's essentially just going to be based on time. Um, but generally between this um, end of this year to next day, you should have to see, you start seeing large solar farms in some of the northern states. Because like I always say, you can take off um, some of the public institutions um, off the grid. Um, yes. The military barracks, like in the northeast, in the northwest, could be completely off the grid. Um, they, should, they shouldn't be waiting or depending on the transmission of energy from Olorun Shogu, from places in Kogi, down to those places. So they yes. can be self-sustaining um, with solar solutions. But we are going to see a transition. Uh, we are seeing in some aspect, we are going to see large public um, solar farms coming on very, very soon. Well, let's hope to see large solar farms uh, coming up and also hope that they are sustainable and uh, well protected against vandalism and, uh, you know, theft from maybe local residents or deviants who might want to take advantage of such things. Let's also uh, move on and, and mirror our discussion into um, the commercial part of, you know, energy. Uh, talking about people who use some of these, uh, who use things like generators, either uh, PMS powered generators or diesel powered generators to run their businesses. It's becoming more and more difficult for them to access this at very cheap rates. Uh, how do you think this is affecting one, businesses, and in turn, the larger scale of economy? I mean, if the cost of um, doing business, um, the cost of your inputs into the business, let's say, let's look at it practically. You have to buy expensive um, generators, um, expensive generator itself yes. because it's imported. The foil is expensive. You need to service the diesel is also expensive. Um, the oil is also expensive. Yes. And that transitions into the cost. You need to cool your freezer, put on the lights. You cannot sell below the cost of running that business. Yes. So in the larger sense, it increases the prices of goods and services in the economy and thus inflation. Yes. Um, so we need to, there needs to really be a lot of subsidies. I mean, we may not like the word subsidies, but in the Western countries, we see subsidies. In France, we saw the rise that came up when subsidy was um, um, taking off energy. Yes. So we need subsidy in one form or the other. Um, it could just be energy. Um, if the government is not looking at going back to petrol and you want to transition to sustainable energy solutions, then you need to provide subsidies to these um, sectors or yes. to this targeted, like we discussed, um, if you are going to start producing solar panels, batteries in your country, then the producers, the manufacturers need to be provided some form of subsidy. Subsidy does not mean giving money. It could be in form of tax rebates, become this, um, in form of um, concessions, things yeah, like that. Yeah, so yeah, this and, is and, what... And policies that, that exactly. favor the, the work that they do in the country. Exactly. So these are the things that the government really needs to look at because you need to stimulate the economy. And yes. subsidy essentially might be a word that has been bandied around. But if you look at it, um, everything that was told to us about subsidy for petrol has come back. Oh, there will no longer be scarcity. Then also um, and, so, and subsidy is being paid still. Yeah, and it people, was denied it, then. It, it was denied then openly. As it stands now, there is a lot of um, mixed comments. There is a lot of uh, comments and counter comments as to whether or not the federal government is still paying subsidy. And somehow, the picture is looking like they're still paying it. But the uh, prices of petroleum products are still skyrocketing. The NPC says uh, under recovery, not yes. subsidy. So yes. whatever it's being called, something is being paid. Something is being, <laughs> some, something <laughs> is being paid. A, a couple of weeks ago, about a week or two, two uh, weeks ago, um, we saw in the news that petroleum uh, or PMS fuel is selling at nine hundred and um, and. 
80 naira or so in Abuja and about 850 naira in Lagos. I am not sure if that uh, price has come down a little bit or not, but this was at the height of the fuel scarcity that rocked many parts of the country, um, you know, in, the, in about two weeks ago. Somehow, during that period, MDPRA went about filling stations, stopping them from selling petroleum products to people using jerry cans. Now, mind you, I had earlier mentioned that with the unavailability of electricity in the country, which most businesses thrive on, they will certainly need to power their generators, which are being imported, and they are buying at high cost. So if... <laughs> If these businesses are to survive, how are they supposed to get access to the the um, petroleum that they are supposed don't, to power their generation? Don't go far to yes. the businesses. Is it not a contradiction that in Nigeria you would find um, at the filling station you would see um, black marketers selling in front of the in front station. of the filling? Is a contradiction if the filling station does not have um petrol then why should the black marketer by the side have there's a filling station along an express where i drive by every day the filling station has two branches across facing each other it's been closed for almost a month now over a month over a month but every single morning every single day afternoon and night there are people with jerry cans filled with fuel standing in front of the same filling station that has been locked for over a month. What do you make of this? What do you make of this situation? To, to me, it's rather a... Uh, the, more you, I, the more you look, the less you see kind of situation. I really don't know. It's some kind of Houdini magic thing that happens in this country. Okay, where do they get the petrol products from? You see cars buying it and those stations are locked. So essentially, the regulator has to look at not who buys in the jerry can for example um somebody's car stops on the road which is not really nice but it can happen to anybody yes. and you have to buy let's say four liter before you can even drive into the filling station and you are not allowed to but somebody comes with 25 50 liters they can buy to resell to even the same person yes so the regulator should actually be looking at dealing with the black market operators by the side because it's essentially now a, it's been a business from time immemorial since we are growing up yes and it's not focus on who comes to buy for their generator because now you see people having to go and buy bring their generators to the filling station put foil for me inside or some put into the cars they have to draw it out things like that so these are the things that the regulator needs to sit down and look at it's is that a better source of employment going to buy foil and sell as black market than to do other things in yes. the country? So it's really not a nice thing to do. Well, well, uh, let's let's hope that uh, all of this comes into uh, consideration and uh, NNPCL also steps up and uh, the oil cabal that you know Dangote and his uh, peers have complained about in the regime or the NNPCL itself sort of take their hands off the energy sector so that Nigeria can thrive. Now let's um, let's look at hydropower generation for instance. Uh, looking at Kainji Dam in Niger State, the Dadinkoa Dam in Gombe, uh, Kiri Dam in Adamawa State and most popularly uh, the Mambila Dam in Gembu Taraba State. These are all dams that sort of generate power for different parts of the country. Now, talking particularly about Mambila Dam, I've done a documentary in, in Gembu in Taraba State where um, I went down there, traveled all the way down to Gembu and went to do a story about the dam that has been promised to, you know, be completed since the 70s. It's been decades. I went there and surprisingly, there was no dam. What do you make of such? How would you react to such a development where promises have been made, millions of dollars have been earmarked, government after government since the 80s? I think 
during the course of the interview, I, I spoke to a villager, a very aged woman, who said that the first time that government officials came to the village to start construction there was in the 70s. She was still a young woman. She had just gotten married then. Her husband has died. Her brothers have died. Her father has died. She's now very old. And still, they have not completed the dam. Mind you, I did not see a dam. I only saw a river with very high currents that could situate a dam, but there was no dam. Are Nigerians being lied to concerning some of these things I by mean, the government? A lot of people, a lot of Nigerians um, believe there's a, the Mambila Dam exists. Yes. Um, but um, a lot of people that have, yes, your documentary and other people have said that um, there's been no dam in um, there's no dam but you'd see pictures Thailand. online yes um so i do not know why we keep playing these funny games um a minister right yes before yes um, he's been minister. accused yes or, or he was ar once arrested by the efcc so we do not really know the truth in all of this um it's been budgeted for it's yeah. been um, um, said that the dam is going to be completed within a number of years, blah, blah, blah. Yet you are not seeing any dam. So I do not know why we yes. should um, keep on behaving this way. If really there's no, um, there's no project, then you essentially come out, there's no project. I don't know why we keep going back. Up. Engineer, let's... Um get back to the discussion on power you were earlier uh making a comment about the manvilla dam and uh somehow there, there is a report here uh that nigeria has awarded 5.8 billion us dollars manvilla dam projects uh, manvilla power dam project to china's ccecc yet again this report is just coming in today Thursday, 29th August, 2024. It's surprising that this is coming at a time like this. When 5.8 5 billion US dollars. When it's, we are saying awarded, um, I thought it had been awarded and work had been ongoing since the 70s. So I do not know what awarded means. Uh, but if that is the news coming in, then we have to follow the news closely and see how it goes well well considering that uh, the that the china civil engineering construction corporation ccecc has been in the picture of nigeria's infrastructural development uh, in the in the last couple of years just as much as julius bega was decades ago uh, do you think that somehow they should be held to ransom this is not the first time monies are being allocated to them, yet we are not seeing anything being done towards uh, either starting work there or the completion of the dam. Well, the government needs to really tell us about um, the history of this dam. Um, I think Nigerians need to ask questions. Um, when was it first awarded? What has been done? Has it been budgeted for at any time? Um, what are the agreements that have been gone into um, and even presently okay it's been awarded um, what exactly is the scope of the work things like that we need to really know um, because we can see um, Zungeru can Zungeru also um, is back on board yes we can see Kaenji this is where dams being built so if a dam um, ha has not started even supplying um, even not uh, budgeted um, 3,000 megawatts uh, or is it 3 gigawatts that have been said, then we've not even seen 100. Then I think um, we shouldn't really um, take it seriously until we see some traction. Well, well, well I apologize. Um, the, the awarded contract didn't come in uh, this morning. It actually was awarded uh, in 2017, I just okay. got a correct, um, an updated report on this. So it was uh, awarded to CCECC in 2017 Seven. by, uh, you know, the administration of the day then. Uh, and, and somehow these monies were expected to have gotten the project to at least 
70 to 80 percent completion but somehow we are not seeing even five or ten percent um you know completion in the project so um i don't know the time when your interview or your um documentary um when was it this was around 2021 2021 so yes. definitely um um if from the 2017 to that time means no work has been done then from 2021 up to now um the news has cooled down i'm not sure anything would have come on board but the administration of president um bola metinibu needs to increase our or our energy sufficiency like yes. what we are um, discussing here so you should look at it as one of the critical or legacy projects um, it can um, establish for Nigerians, um, apart from diversifying other energy sources, which is what you should look at. Well, well, well certainly, let's uh, hope that the federal government uh, takes a, a more closer and a more critical look into um, divers diversifying energy sources. Let's still, um, you know, hamper on hydro power. You you mentioned uh, Kainji Dam, you mentioned the other one, Zungeru, uh, exactly. We have a lot of these dams generating, you know, megawatts of, of power across the country. But somehow it seems like it's not sufficient enough. And another thing that most people would want to know just much like crude is causing an environmental hazard to the people in the Niger Delta. Some people have complained that hydropower, the dams that are being built in some of these, you know, stations, are also posing environmental harm to the people living within these communities. Do you share the same thoughts? And what possible harm do you think uh, these dams are posing to people? So essentially, before projects are undergone, um, you need to conduct what is called an um, ESIA. Yes. Um, so that ESIA would tell you um, the, the negative impacts that would definitely occur. And in some places, um, you have that's an environmental and social impact assessment. Yes. So the environmental, what it does to the aquatic life within that place and on the social aspect, how it affects the lives of the people within the environment. People will definitely be displaced. Um, issues of flooding, the rising tide across the banks, people would have to leave their homes that are close to where these dams will be sited. So yes. essentially, yes, there would be um negative impacts are um at the environment but the government or the builders or stakeholders have to compensate or relocate those um those individuals living, living, living within that that yes. particular so area it is part what i part of the esi is what are you going to do about this this is the impact what are you going to do about it this is the mitigation strategy so essentially the government needs to do that. Um, there are some cases where communities have come out to say, oh, we're not paid compensation. We're just told, don't worry, we paid compensation. And some said, okay, they were paid. Maybe their leaders took the money. Um, some were said they were not given any other land. They just had to move anywhere else. So these are issues that come up. But there must be that mitigation. Yes. When you are going to build, then you must have a place to relocate these people and um, solve all the problems that are attached to it. The, the immediate problems. Exactly. Well, well engineer, let's, um, let's, let's move over to coal. In Enugu, there is a coal mine, which is no longer functioning. And we know that coal is another energy source that... Exactly. I, I mean, energy sources are so diverse, from crude to hydropower to wind power to, to coal to firewood. There are a lot of energy sources. However... The coal mine in Enugu has not been functioning for decades. It has been shut down. And recently, I think calls were made by uh, elders in the northeastern parts of the country for the coal mine to, you know, be, be revived. Uh, just as well as the Ajaokota steel industry and all these other industries that have been uh, shut down for a very long time. Firstly, I want to get your take on the the idea of sourcing for energy 
from coal. Do you think that perhaps Nigeria, the Nigerian government or Nigerians in general think that coal is sort of outdated and not a viable or reliable means of energy generation? I mean, if we are looking at America as a standard, yes. the Western world, they still have coal plants. Yes. So why not? As long as it doesn't affect the environment that much or these um, negative impacts are mitigated, um, why not use it? Because if you look at it, um, the there's a cost to sustainability. Um, even the lithium that is being mined from the ground, there's all, all, there will definitely be a negative impact or a cost to it. Yes. Um, so Nigeria needs to look at various sources, but we know that we, we must focus on sustainability, but whatever it takes for the country to get to a level where we can have sufficient energy that will drive and improve our economy, we can take that path. Uh, Menegu being known as the coal, coal city, yes. um, was, um, coal was part of the, or the essential energy source that drove the industrial revolution. In Nigeria. You know what I mean? In, 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 the, world, world, in the, the world. In the world generally. So um, it's, it could be a short term, long term, um, I mean, sorry, a medium to long term solution to some of our energy challenges while we look at sustainability. I mean, um, comparative advantage would be good. Let's say in the north, you have much more sunlight. Uh, you look more towards the solar. Yes. In the south, Nigeria is known more as a gas nation than even for crude. Yes. Um, that's why you look at most of the thermal gas power plants are in the southern part of, of, Nigeria. of, of Nigeria. So yeah. definitely we need to look at comparative advantage. If Mambila really was, like Niger State now, you have different dams within Niger State. If um, Taraba State um, has um, hydro sources, if, um, why not? Not audio dams. Dams, really like the Mambila dam. dam. Yeah. So definitely we should look at our, our comparative advantage. In um, um, France, they use nuclear um, energy to to provide them um, clean nuclear energy yeah uh but there uh, i saw protests from some germans uh, who were complaining about um how it was being dumped or their land or things like that. so everything definitely would have its advantages and disadvantages but they need to be mitigated against um so essentially that's what it is but nigeria can look at that as well and and you 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 rightly pointed out that Nigeria is uh, more known as a, a gas nation than even um, a crude uh, nation. And if you recall, recently uh, the federal government made a statement to roll out uh, CNG buses for ease of transportation, considering the high cost of petroleum products in the country. And uh, somehow they have taken delivery of some of these buses, which will be available to civil servants across the country. And they are encouraging more CNG conversion plans to be you know, erected in parts of the country and encouraging individuals with vehicles to convert their cars from uh, uh, PMS vehicles to cng yes. uh, vehicles what do you make of this do you think this is sustainable or are we just shying away from the fact that the government has not been able to provide pms to the public at affordable rates you've said what i've always been saying when we 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 abdicate the responsibility of making refineries work and providing sufficient pms diesel for our citizens then we run to cng and when we have challenges with CNG, what do we run to? Maybe so, we'll run to firewood. Uh, possibly, you, put, you <laughs> get some firewood and put it inside. So I don't think that just running to CNG would be the solution. Uh, if the, there should be different sources. And I mean, in the, if we're just looking at, okay, everybody should move to CNG. Yes. It's not something you just buy in the market. True. It's not cheap. I'm it's, sure you must have priced it. Certainly not cheap. Not cheap. So would a Nigerian that would um, struggling with rent, school fees and other things now start looking at converting a car to CNG, uh, which is not just a small amount then, okay, since you've converted it, then it's not cheaper. They start hearing the cost 
of the CNG. Start uh, skyrocketing. <laughs> skyrocketing. And then it's going to it's certainly going to so skyrocket. That is just the way it's going to go, whether we like it or not. So we cannot just run away from PMS. Oh CNG uh, for now. The government needs to take its responsibility and well, I, I I believe one question that is always on the minds of Nigerians when they hear oh cars are now going to be running on CNG gases, they are now going to be uh, converted and all of that tanks will be placed in your in your uh, trunk or your boots how safe are these tanks how safe is the gas itself uh, well i'm not um i've not really looked at the, i've asked the yes. question what about the safety records um, and all that things because sometimes you need a gestation period for a new product let's say people have used it for six months one year we've seen we've had a good safety record yes um but essentially i know cng as a gas should be um safer than um other forms like lpg and yes. the rest but we need a gestation period to know okay this is really safe for six months for one year cars be using it there are no issues then we can now start talking about um the safety of cng uh for others but for now the major issue is the cost yes. not even the safety for nigerians it's it's the cost uh, people with, with, with people importing electric vehicles and now the federal government urging people to convert their vehicles to to cng cars and all it, it seems like there are so many cars in nigeria with varying modes of um you know being powered the evs the cng cars the petroleum cars are, are we rather running into a state of confusion as a country in terms of how we power our cars i mean it, it's becoming quite uh herculean most of the things we see in nigeria is majorly the policies of fallout from what the west yes. is doing so everybody's talking about um um electric vehicles but i've read articles i've seen interviews of dissenting voices that says look i have challenges with my electric vehicles um not just charging stations type of chargers okay tesla only um has one type of charger it's just like an iphone yes that you can't use the charger to charge other phones so we should always look at the dissenting voices yes. not just the trends okay ah, everybody has cng everybody has electric vehicle but what about the dissenting voices what about people that would bring out the challenges and, and, and mind you these electric vehicles don't come cheap as well at all they are very expensive and and getting to charge an electric vehicle to power is from zero to 100 is also not cheap yes. considering the high electricity tariff that we are currently experiencing as a country is that also a viable means of uh, uh transportation or you know powering cars or should people just forget about it and focus on 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 uh, pms in your opinion amongst these three evs cng cars and pms powered cars which one is more sustainable for the ordinary common man? It, at the end of the day, economics always wins. It boils down to which provides the the cheapest option and the most um, viable. So, yes. for example, let's say if you have an electric um, keke na pep now, plying a certain route, you have CNG keke and you have uh, PMS. If the electric is cheaper, People will definitely start running to, to towards that. that. Yeah. So it's always about the economics. Um, even if you put all a policy, people always run to that um, cheaper option. Yes. But the other side of it is availability of electricity. Is even it available? If, is it available? That's the challenge. The CNG, we don't really know about it. We don't want to start hearing tomorrow, oh, the gas is not available. It's scarce. These are the challenges. And we have to import it. it. We have to import it. So whatever diesel has, um, um, petrol has faced, yes. we might still have the same challenges across board. But at the end of the day, whatever is safe for our environment, what we breathe in, essentially, and what is much more cost effective. Yes. Because we must always look at the financial side of, of things. And that would be what would win.
not just what is the best or most flashy. Well, let's uh, hope that uh, the best one wins and that Nigerians can drive their cars uh, with ease and be able to purchase, you know, uh, affordable energy sources to power their cars. Now, as we look to wrap up this segment, one part of um, energy generation that we have not really touched, uh, which also has some sort of adverse effect on the environment, is firewood wood trees are being felled in in forests in the northern parts of the country you'd find deforestation at a very high rise due to cutting down of trees mostly for firewood people can't afford kerosene people can't afford gas cooking gas people can't afford well charcoal is also gotten from yes from wood so it's either these fire these woods are cut down to be used directly as firewoods or they are cut down to be converted to charcoals which are more affordable means of um, energy generation for people who want to uh, use them for cooking having an adverse effect on their economy what is your take on this source of energy that is cheap yet very hazardous to the environment um you know firewood it's not something that um um, just began a few years ago, a decade. It had been some um, an energy source that began even before our parents, before yes. our grandparents. Um, it's been there from time immemorial. Yes. So it takes a lot of mindset change, government advocacy, policies to change, and availability of the other source. Yes. Um, so if you want people not to use firewood, what other source would be available in a remote village? These are things these that are, we need these to are these are the questions. Yes, so not just okay, it's um, dangerous to the environment. Fine, what are you going to do about it? So, are you going to gas is scarce within the town? Um, not scarce in the sense that um, it's not available. It's it's expensive, and transporting it to let's say a remote village, yes. you need to have a gas station or clean cooking stoves that we have um, right now. So we need to not just look at the challenges or what is being said globally but what are the possible alternatives to these things and um, so and also um a, a lot of advocacy has to go into it i know some energy companies are doing that but you have to go into it to tell the people the ample effects uh, of the firewood may breathing in the smoke and all that things yes it's, it's harmful but these are the things that need to come into play for the villagers, for the people in the rural areas to move away from firewood. All right. Well, uh, in, in closing, just a few words. We have a few seconds to go. What will be your message to one stakeholders in the energy sector, uh, the federal government, private sector energy generators, and uh, people in the entire energy ecosystem? I would say um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu should try to make the cost of energy cheaper for Nigerians. Um, it's not really easy when you're coming to work and you see lots of Nigerians not able to afford um, transportation coming to work. The money that they earn has finished um, just even before the month comes in. And also for stakeholders, bring in the best solution. Do yes. not... Um, look at um, just the profit that's involved. Look at the best solutions. How can we make Nigeria better? And that would um, um, take us forward and not back. We can become like the best um, nations in the world. We have all it takes. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Felix Omokaro. It's been wonderful having you here on the program, sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much. All right.